I'm Sarah. We're working on our ornaments. We have one more to go. We're going to make the Santa Claus. Um, so I'm going to work from a kit, a supply pack, which uh, we're selling on Etsy. You can buy either um, one of each design, the, the Santa, the snowman, and the seal, or you could buy three of one design. So if you really love the you know the snowman and you want to do more of those um, so um, I'm gonna work from this so that you guys can see what's in it and how how we use it so the first thing you'll need is your pipe cleaner and you're gonna bring the ends together and find the center and pinch it at the center and we're gonna make a simple armature by twisting these two pieces together Twist them evenly. You don't have to twist them really tightly. You can see I'm doing nice big like half inch um, twists here. And then leave about an inch and a half at the bottom. This is going to be his feet. Let me do one more. And then fold the, the tip back so that you have about three quarter inch or inch long little feet there there they are and we're gonna wrap those with black first thing so in your kit is some black and just pull off a piece that's about two inches long and split it in half lengthwise so you have two pieces and do one on each foot and I usually start at the you can go around the base of the the body part just to get it anchored and I start there and I go out to the toe when I get to the toe just kind of angle it and go back and it's that angle that keeps the wool from slipping off the end and then just felt that until it's going to stay. This isn't a very elaborate um, foot. It's just a little black kind of Q-tip shape. So start at the base, go around towards the toe. When I get to the toe, I'm going to angle back. And then felt it. If you're just starting, um, I have a bunch of videos out. They're sort of, I think they're episodes about one through seven that go through a lot of um, in detail technique. And it would be good to watch those because I talk about wrapping and, you know, how to work with roving and, um, just a lot of things in a, in a lot more detail that might be useful if you're just if you're just starting okay so once we have our feet on we need to start building the body and the body is basically a teardrop shape real fat and round at the bottom and going to a point so we're going to take out our red we want to start with uh, about an eight inch piece and I'm gonna split it in half just so I have a more manageable amount some of this red is the fibers are really short so without holding it too far apart um, you can you can just pull it right apart so just be careful as you're wrapping that you you hold it closely and don't pull it um, too hard too far you know with your hands too far apart it'll it'll just pull apart I'm starting by the feet and just smoothly pretty tightly going towards the tip and when I get to the tip I can go around and angle back and what we're going for here is a nice pointy triangle at the top So the next piece, when I go towards the tip, 
I'm not going to go as far. So if I come here and angle back, then that'll leave this skinny and start to build up that, that triangle shape that we want at the top. So I'm starting at the bottom again, wrapping up, going about a half an inch from the top this time, and go back down. So that leaves that skinny point there. So now I really want to build up this, this round you know, body base area. So I'm going to take another eight or nine inch piece and I'm not going to split it in half this time. And I'm going to concentrate the wool towards the bottom. I'm not even really going up on this hat area. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of this red wool to really make them nice and round. So I'm going for a nice, pretty firm consistency. Do another one. So this time I'm going to start to um, crisscross. And so I'm going to bring my wool this way and around and then this way. And I'm just going to keep making an X right on the belly. And what that does is it loads the wool in the center and tapers it towards the top and bottom. That wasn't a very long piece. I'll be able to show you better with this next longer piece so you can really see. All right, we do a nice long like 12 inch piece. I always sort of straighten my wool out so that when I wrap it, I know it's going to go on smoothly. All right, let me show you this X idea. So now I'm going bottom to top and around, and now I'm going top to bottom and around. Bottom to, whoopsie, broke my wool. Bottom to top and top to bottom. There's a million ways to reach the same same place. This is just kind of the way I've figured it out. Or this time, I think I'm going to just concentrate it right around the middle here, just by wrapping. I want them just a little bit fatter still. So I'm going to do one more piece. Right around there. And then I'll felt this a little more. But the last thing I want to do is just blend this area from here to here a little bit. So I'll take about a four or five inch piece. And I'm just going to like hold it with my thumb onto the body, go around the hat once, and then return to the body. And that just, and then I'll needle felt it smooth, but that just makes that transition a little nicer. Okay, okay. I spent a couple minutes felting him and shaping him. You're going to want to probably do more needle felting than I did as I was going through those steps, but... Um, you can pause your, you know, pause your video and felt a little bit and then keep going. So you got to pick what's going to be his front. And I usually just look for which side's fatter and this side's a little fatter. So that's going to be his face is going to be here. 
so you can kind of angle his feet that way. And then um, we're going to start, he does have a face under there, it's pretty simple, but it's there. So I like to start with the nose, and there is some flesh tone um, in your kit, and you're going to pull a little like sort of thumb thumbprint sized piece. It's got a little I'm just stacking it up to get it back condensed. And then I'm putting um some U Smooth in my palm. This is a um beeswax and lanolin shea butter bar that, that we sell and it gives your palm some grip so that when you roll the wool in your palm, it starts to come together. If you don't have it, you can just put a little bit of water on your palm and that that does the same, that helps too. So I'm just gonna roll around and around. I'm pressing actually very hard. And you start to feel it form a ball and then just go back and forth. And then you're gonna end up with a nice kind of sort of almondy seed shape. So roll your to fold your seed in half basically so the two points come together and just needle felt that a little bit so you basically have this triangle and the point of the triangle is going to be the top of the nose and the base of the triangle you're going to kind of round out with your needle into the bottom of his nose. You know, your guy could have a little tiny petite nose, he could have a great big nose. This is sort of up to you. Okay, so I put it, I imagine the brim of his hat will be about here. So I put it just down from that. I mean, technically, I guess it's about halfway from the bottom to the top, but depending on where your teardrop forms, um, you know, your, where you place your nose might be a little different. So under the nose, we want to put a little black mouth, like he's saying, ho, ho, ho. And all this is is as if his mouth were open. So I just bring the, a small amount, sm much smaller than the nose was. It was, you know, a pinch. Um, bring it together in my palms. And this doesn't need a lot of dimension. We actually want this to be quite flat. I'm just felting a circle. And I'm leaving a little bit of space between the nose and the mouth for um, his mustache. And then under the mouth, we want a lip. So I take some pink, about the same as amount as I did for the mouth, a little pinch. And I'm gonna roll it in my palm to get that same seed or almond shape. And then back and forth in one direction. But this time, instead of folding it in half, I'm just gonna round it around like a little crescent this bottom half of his mouth, bringing the corners right up to the sides. And you want it to have a little bit of dimension. You want it to kind of stick out like a little lower lip. Okay, and with the same pink, I do a little blush cheek just off the side of the nose on each side. Just a thin amount. The whole rest of him pretty much gets covered with curls, which is the fun part. Let me just get a little bit more pink right here. Okay. And then we just want to set two eyes in there with a really small amount of black.
and I set them just just above the cheeks to the side of the nose I'm doing this upside down it probably is ending up looking absolutely crazy and I can't even tell let me see all right not too bad turn him over for a minute so I can see him <laughs> okay so to put the curls on, we want to put the curls on before we put the brim of the hat on. In your kit are some little locks. These happen to be tease water locks. And we want to kind of select um, what you want, you know, for the mustache and sideburns. And you got to kind of pick through them and see what you want. So I'm going to find two good curls for the sideburns. So you want to pick two similar um, nice long curls. Let me see, maybe I'll just split this in half and do each side. And go down the side of his face. So just along the eyes and cheek. This is sort of like what a sideburn would be. Just this is the first step because we want the other curls to kind of overlap this part. But you can, you know, really, you can take your time with this and have fun picking out the curls and have fun arranging them. I like to try to, you know, let the the natural pointy end of the sheep curl be the end. And then the next thing you want to do is put the mustache on. So find a nice curl. I usually felt it under the nose in the middle and instead of just going straight across I fold it back. And then I do that on each side. So I would felt it right under the nose here above the mouth. So you could just leave it like a mustache like that. Or I, I fold it back and then I just felt it a little more. And then I do the same thing on the other side. These curls are so springy and lively. And that gives him that nice little kind of part in the middle of the mustache under his nose. So for the beard, you want to find a nice full piece, like a nice thick full piece of locks, like this. And you can just tack it on like that if you want it to be really long. I like to take the curls tips and actually point them up and felt the center kind of doing it just like I did the mustache. You got to feel for where the bottom of that lip is and felt right under the lip and then fold these pretty points down and then you get your nice full beard under that lip. And then I like to put two little eyebrows if you can find a short curl, great. If not, you can cut a curl in half. I'm sure it's probably hard to see what I'm doing because this is so small and curly. I usually angle the eyebrows up in the center so that he looks very happy and not angry. All right, then you take some white it's a nice bright white in your kit you take it in your hands and I just start to roll it in my palm to start to form like a rope kind of like a tube And you want to create the brim of his hat by 
simply folding it around and then I let the two ends meet in the back and needle felt them together. And I like to keep some dimension to this, you know, keep it round. I don't totally flatten it out, but Get the hat brim on. <laughs> Felt this down a little bit. And then the last thing in your, well, there's two more things. In your kit is a pair of glasses. And I just set them on like that. And then there is a clear piece of fishing line, which if you're not careful, you can lose very quickly. So, to finish off your Santa on so he can hang from the tree, um, you just thread the fishing line in a needle. And I usually go up from under the brim of the hat, kind of out the, oh, I forgot about the bell. It doesn't have to go out the tip because you kind of want the tip to fold over, but I just come out from the top of the head, sort of around the top of the head. And you go back in and you try to come, you try to come out in the same spot in the back. So then you have a loop and you just tie these two pieces together in the back. Made it nice and long for you so it's not totally frustrating. And then you can cut the cut it off behind the knot. In your kit is also a little bell. I hear it. There it is. And with a piece of red thread, you can sew the bell to the tip of the hat this guy has. Thanks so much for following along. It's been really fun to do these little um, ornament projects with you guys. It's a nice break from the intensity of uh, making a realistic animal. So I hope you have fun with it and either enjoy them on your tree or give them as a gift to, um, to someone because I'm sure they'll love it too. Thanks.